Ahoy oceanographers! Welcome to My Science Blast, where we explore the wonders of the natural world. I'm Mike Kozik, and today our guest is a particular sea creature that I spotted while swimming in the Eastern Atlantic. I'm talking about the Catastylus taji jellyfish. Yes, that's right. This curious sea creature swam right by me, and it did not take long to find several others swimming nearby. Okay, to kick things off, let's learn a little bit about this particular jelly, as sometimes they are called. This particular jellyfish we see here is the Catostylus taji, also known as the Medusa do Tejo. This is named after the Tagus River near Lisbon, Portugal. Now this species is found in the Eastern Atlantic, open ocean, and the coastal waters off of Lisbon and Setubal, a little bit further south of Lisbon. And you can sometimes see swarms of them after storms have pushed them towards the coast and when the water seems a bit warmer than usual. You can also find this kind of jellyfish in other parts of the world, but they don't quite look the same as the ones found off the Iberian coast as other varieties might look a little stubbier with slightly shorter tentacles. So what sets these off and makes them look different from other jellyfish? Well, for one, its bell, or that dome-shaped cap, can grow up to 30 centimeters or about a foot in diameter, sometimes more, and the colors can vary from shades of blue to purple, sometimes beige or almost white. The kinds that I saw and the ones we see here are mostly beige. Now sometimes you see these jellies washed up on the beach and how can you tell one type from another? Well, one very strong characteristic is this X-shaped pattern in the crown of its bell. So you can see this and this is because the translucent uh, collagen or the, the blubber that it's made of shows the gonads that are showing through from below. And that's this is the typical pattern that you see in this variety of jellyfish. Others will have other marks. And even this one on the surface, if you zoom in, it's got an amazing texture that is often missed. The pattern that you see on this on the surface of the bell looks like a lot of tiny dendritic uh, dark brown filaments against a lighter background. Hard to describe, but it's really amazing when you look at it. It's almost like the, the deep parts of folds all over the surface of it. What's even more fascinating is its adaptability to various ocean conditions, allowing it to thrive in both coastal and open waters. And when you see it in the estuaries, we're starting to see a little bit of a low saline, uh, slight freshwater influence. Nevertheless, these are saltwater creatures. Now the Catostylus taji is not generally considered to be highly venomous or dangerous to humans. However, it can inflict a good sting through its nematocyst cells. And these cells, if you look at them up close, they're like a little coiled harpoon ready to shoot out. And when it's triggered by brushing up against some kind of prey, the harpoon shoots out at about 5 million Gs and injects a toxin into its prey. Now to give you an idea of what 5 million Gs is like, when Air Force pilots accelerate, they can accelerate up to about 10, 12 Gs, maybe even 15 before they pass out. So 5 million Gs, you can imagine the acceleration of this harpoon into its prey. Now of course these are microscopic and uh, the toxin varies depending on the species. And if you happen to be stung by this jellyfish or any jellyfish, you gotta actually rinse it with vinegar to get the toxins neutralized and to pre prevent any discharge of additional nematocysts. You can also remove tentacles with tweezers or with gloves if you see any that are on your skin. And then finally, you wanna rinse with seawater. You don't wanna use fresh water because that can also trigger nematocysts. So make sure that you use seawater. So why on earth do they have these nematocysts and harpoon-like triggers? Well, this is how they feed. These jellyfish are opportunistic feeders, primarily consuming zooplankton, some small crustaceans, and even very small fish. And the way they eat is fascinating. They don't have a mouth like many species. Instead, their mouth is distributed among their oral arms, each of which has almost microscopic oral tentacles 
that absorb captured prey. Even though this species of jellyfish can inflict a sting, if carefully prepared, the Catostylus taji is an edible species of jellyfish. Yes, you heard right. The bell or umbrella, as well as the tentacles, are edible. Just make sure that you prepare it with someone who's done this before. Now, like many other organisms in the ocean, it's essential to consider the challenges that all these animals face. Climate change, pollution, and overfishing can all have an impact on these habitats where these guys live. The jellyfish are known to adapt to all kinds of environmental changes. In fact, they've survived many massive extinctions in the geologic record. Now, some species can even thrive in warm waters. Hint, climate change and warm oceans, right? In other words, most of the heat in the atmosphere, 96% of it ends up in the ocean. So this is why we often see swarms or thriving jellyfish, especially in the tropical waters. Okay, so there you have it, folks. Our journey to the underwater realm of Catastylus taji, or the blubber jellyfish. From its captivating appearance to its vital role in the ocean system, there's so much more to explore and discover. Stay curious, and until next time, this is Mike Kozik signing off from My Science Blast. Happy exploring! <laughs>